2021. All good. Got some thumbs up. Helen, we're ready to go. All right. So Fantastic. if you can hear me, Catherine Pereira, that means that you are here for the first live session of the School for Change Agents 2021. What a year it has been. And we are so glad to be here with you and so glad to be celebrating knowledge and ideas and methods for how we make change happen in the world, because that is what our school community is all about. So you'll see that we've shared on the screen some ideas for how you can get the most out of the session today, removing distractions, writing mission statements for yourself, posting those up where you can see them. And I'm just gonna ask that we move forward to see our next slide, please. So there are a number of ways to stay in touch with the school community. And really it is all about the community. It's about you learning and sharing together and helping us to keep learning too. Firstly, we love Twitter. So please do connect with us on Twitter if you've not done so already. Hashtag s c a and we use the Twitter handle SCH, the digit four, and the word change, school for change. That's how you can keep in conversation with us. You can also join us at the School for Change Agents group on Facebook. And we're also using Insta and other social media platforms where you can connect with us too. So we'll just move forward one more, please. Another way you can keep in touch is to sign up for our newsletter. So on the right hand side, you'll see a QR code. If you have a smartphone, please use the camera now. You can scan that QR code and it will take you straight to the bits that matter. Sign up or use the link there. That's horizonsnhs.com forward slash school. And that will take you straight to the sign up page for the newsletter. It's packed full of ideas and case studies, other events, ways of connecting with people in the School for Change Agents community. So it's well worth a bit of a read. I can see my chat box going haywire, which is wonderful. Everybody signing in. Welcome to the session. We'll just move forward one more slide, please. Lots of ways to connect this year. One of the things we're doing that we've never done before is to use podcasts. So Agents Assemble is a weekly podcast referencing the content that we've been placing on the platform FutureLearn. Um, it is great fun. It's a short introduction that gives you a behind the scenes look at the team in NHS Horizons that have designed and put together the School for Change Agents. It also contains some really useful nuggets that go a bit deeper on the content. So there you can see how to access it. It's horizonsnhs.com forward slash school or simply go to wherever you get your podcasts usually, and you'll be able to find us, Agents Assemble. We'll move forward again. So what we're going to do this week is a complement to the FutureLearn platform, where we've been posting content over five weeks on different aspects of how we make change happen. And what we're going to be looking at this week is the fundamental idea that we are not drivers and leaders of change, we are ourselves the change and that change starts with me, it starts with us and that's how we build it together. So we'll be hearing from Helen on ideas such as change agency, how we build our power collectively, how we can make a positive difference in the world and what it means to make that happen. Now, I've referenced FutureLearn, so just before we get started, I'm going to ask Ollie to open a poll in the chat box, please. And we just want to know, have you already joined the School for Change Agents on the FutureLearn platform? So are you already taking part in the FutureLearn platform School for Change Agents? Now, I appreciate if you're listening to this on Catch Up, or via YouTube Live, you may not be able to access the poll, but we just want to get that sense of where people are coming from today. So I can see that four out of five of us are already there on FutureLearn taking part in the community, which is absolutely fantastic, and a few of us not. If you're not sure, at the end of this session, I'm gonna remind you of the details of how to get into the platform. And if you haven't joined yet, 
all of the resources that we make freely available will be there for you for a number of weeks. So please do join, bring your friends, collaborators and colleagues and get involved with changing the world using the resources that are available. Thanks, Ollie. I think we got a fairly solid four out of five for that. So that's great. So what I'm going to do next is hand over to Helen Bevan, who's going to lead us through our session. We have, as I say, two more sessions. So perhaps we can just see the slides for those before we move on. We've got two more sessions which will be coming up, one next week and the week after. Next week, Helen and I are going to focus on this question of shared purpose, power, agency and autonomy. How do we use narratives and movement approaches in order to build change with others? We'll be thinking about inclusion and belonging, stories of us and how they move others to action with us. We'll also be thinking about inequalities and social justice. And in our final week of live sessions on the 1st of June, we'll be looking at how we put the work of change agency into context. How do we manage change and manage ourselves when the environment around us is complex and ever-changing? We're going to call on you to raise your sight, your line of sight and your ambitions in making change happen. So lots more to follow. But for this week, with the theme of change starts with me, I'm going to hand over to Helen Bevan to introduce herself and to open this first session. Helen, over to you. Oh, thank you, Catherine, and, and thank you, team. So, if I could, um, if we could take those slides down, and I can, uh, so I can uh, share my screen. That'd be fantastic. So, great to see so many of you. Um, with us here for the um, live session and uh, it's a little sense of deja vu for me because um, uh, we've been doing uh, we've been doing this um, since 2014 and um, and you know actually um, a couple of the slides today the content is the same I think two slides um, are, is the same as it was in 2014 and uh, and everything else is different so um so you know every every time we do this we get such a great response um, to the school for change agents and um and we uh, we uh, we keep adding to it so um let's uh, let's get going and um just checking that everybody can see my slides okay Brilliant. And um, here we go. And just to say that these slides are already on the Future Learn um, platform um, in a slideshare link. So, um, so you can follow them along and do do tweet, do engage and um, do do talk about this in the chat box, whether you're on um, YouTube or whether you're on Zoom. You know, let's um, let's get some conversations going. So um, as Catherine said, our theme today is about change starts with me and in terms of change starting with me it's it's about how i think so i thought this um this quote from um nick irish and colleagues was a good place to start okay um, you know these are social scientists and what do their studies show while corporate transformation so transformations of big organizations are almost universally assumed to be top-down processes so you know thinking about making big change happen people assume it's a myth that they are they come from um, from senior leaders in reality middle managers and fr and first line supervisors can make significant change when they have the right mindset so when we're thinking about change in the right way whoever we are okay wh whoever we are in the organization if we're um you know, a middle manager, a supervisor or team leader, if, if you work in health and care, if you're um, a clinical or social care um, professional, if you're in an administrative role, if you're a student, if you're a trainee, okay, you can still make a significant difference. And that's what today's live session is about, okay? Change starts with me. So I talk there about a myth, okay? And what do we mean by a myth? A myth is something that people assume is true, but the reality is it's not true. And this, um, this drawing here came from um, a study that, that um, our team commissioned um, a few years ago. 
and it was a learning review. And we, we went round the NHS, the English National Health Service, and talked to lots of people who work at the point of care. So nurses, doctors, therapists, uh, uh, support workers. And you know, the, the most significant piece of feedback we got was people saying, colleagues saying, yes, I can see lots of opportunity in my service for change and improvement, but I haven't got permission. You know, I haven't got the power um, to make the change happen. So that's the myth. OK, let's think about um, the reality. What studies show that in general, the opposite is true. You know, people saying, oh, I haven't got permission. My manager won't like it. My leader won't like it. OK, um, you know, I can't do that without permission. And um, Actually, the reality is that typically the opposite is true, that actually leaders are more positive towards their team members who are change orientated, proactive and future focused. So actually, rather than saying, oh, I can't do that, I haven't got permission. It's the opposite. It's leaders saying, you know, we, we want people who are change orientated, proactive and, and, and future focused. So people who've got the courage to be leading um, change. And in that context, I thought that this quote from Celine Schillinger really kind of sums up the essence of what the School for Change Agents is about, and particularly our focus today around change beginning with me. Okay? And Celine says, when change agents experience an expanded zone of freedom, Okay. Another way to connect across hierarchies, geographies, functions, to interact with each other, to display leadership. Okay. It's hard to forget. Okay. And we hope that's what um, the school um, you know, um, gives to people. And you know, particularly people taking part in these live sessions now and you know, the opportunity to connect with each other. You know? And when you do that, it's hard to forget it. And they now know it is possible to do things differently. And very often they've experienced a change in themselves too. And that's our hope with the school. You know, that's how it feels. So in a sense, if we'd say, if the school's given you a gift, this is the gift we'd like to hope that it's given you. You know, confronting people with their freedom may be the ultimate act of love. I love that quote from Peter Block, because the reality is all of us, whoever we are, whatever we do, have got very significant amounts of power to make change happen. You know, we've got the freedom to do it and actually confronting people with it, making people aware of it and how to use it may actually be the ultimate act of love. We'll come back to acts of love later in this session. So it's been quite a year, hasn't it? A year and a bit. And, you know, when you think about what's happened as a result of pandemic, how many things have, have uh, changed, how our lives are so different now, wherever we are in the world, whatever we do, you know, this is truly the age of disruption. OK, you know, things have been turned upside down. Things are being done in such different ways. We, you know, um, a year ago, 18 months ago, we couldn't have dreamt that we would be in such a disruptive, disrupted and disruptive place now. And what does that mean in terms of thinking about leading change or, or supporting change? Well, it means lots of things, but I particularly like this quote from Gary Hamill. And he says, the kinds of management systems that we will need tomorrow, post pandemic, those management systems will need to value diversity, dissent, and divergence as highly as conformance, consensus, and cohesion. And those of us that work in, in large organizations, how it feels sometimes is, you know, um, of course we want, I mean, particularly again, those of us that work in healthcare, you know, we want all our patients, all our service users to, um, to all get high quality care and support. So we need to have a lot of conformance. You know, we don't want variation in the system. We want consensus and want cohesion. We want everybody doing things in the same way so that every patient gets good care. And we want cohesion so everybody works together. OK, and, and I think, you know, those C words are great in a world that is steady and predictable where change happens you know very slow paced and incremental but actually the world that we're in now you know 
it needs other things as well. You know, it needs diversity. It needs different views, different perspectives, um, different um, experiences. It needs dissent. It needs people standing up and saying, why do we do it that way? Why can't we do it differently? And it needs divergence. You know, we need to be doing things in different ways. And, you know, we can see already um, most of us are in are in places where hopefully we're moving towards a post pandemic world. But even in that post pandemic world, we don't see things slowing down. And, you know, my prediction would be that, you know, change is going to continue to happen at a very fast pace. So we need change agents and change leaders that are very good at diversity, dissent and divergence because our systems need it. You know, our populations need it. Our patients and service users need it. And we need the conformance, consensus and cohesion as well. We, we need both. So. You know, it's fine. So I'm um, I'm standing here um, uh, giving you a lecture saying, um, you know, be divergent and be a dissenter, uh, uh, which is fine. But, you know, um, being a change agent, being somebody who is trying to make change happen can be can be so tough. This is my 30th year as an internal change agent in the English National Health Service. And, you know, when I look back on my um, my three decades, um, it hasn't been an easy life, you know. And why is that? Well, because we're working in a system that's so political and not, you know, small p political, but very often, you know, it's built on um, division and um, and uh, silos and criticism. And the status quo, you know, the way that things are done around here, um, you know, the sense of having to get permission to do things uh, differently is very powerful. And very often as a change agent, you can see the potential or the possibility of working in different ways um, with colleagues and with, with service users, but other people just don't see it. And the other things that happen are it can get incredibly personal. So, you know, even though you've got brilliant ideas, even though you've got a track record of change, other people don't like your ideas or, you know, don't like your, your innovation or your creativity. So you get ignored and treated as not relevant. And I mean, that's happened to me so many times and it still happens. OK, it, you know, um, however um, experienced you get at this, however high you go in the system, um, if you're a change agent, you, it, it still feels like that. And um, the other thing that happens is that very often your successes and accomplishments as a change agent don't re get recognised. You know, you don't get you don't get the rewards or the recognition straight away. And you have to choose your battles very carefully. You know, when is it worth um, you know going all in and um, and absolutely insisting on things? And sometimes, you know, you're just never going to win. And and you can have spent two or three years working on the same change projects and you have to come to the conclusion it's just not going to work and you have to detach yourself emotionally from it and you have to walk away and it's really really tough okay so nobody chooses to be a change agent in the kinds of systems um, that um, that we work in or we're part of okay and chooses an easy life <laughs> okay um but there's hope okay when we look at studies of people who um, who year after year uh, manage to um, you know remain as effective change agents, people who rock the boat and stay in it, we see certain characteristics. And I can absolutely recognize this from my own um, practice, but this comes from um, studies by Deborah Mayerson. Okay, who are these people that are able to rock the boat and stay in it? Okay. They're people who manage to walk the very fine line between, between being different and fitting in. People who are inside the team and have the relationships and connections and the trust and inside the team or the organization and have lots of external relationships and um, connections uh, as well. And, you know, very often in our team horizons, we talk about being on the edge of the system. You know, when you're on the edge of the system, you have one foot inside so you're um, you're part of the, the system, you're connected and you're trusted and you have another foot outside the system where you're making all sorts of connections with other people. One thing that I've seen time and time again as being 
making such a difference between those people who can stay and cope being a change agent and those people who um who don't last the course often is about conforming and rebelling at the same time i think it's such an important skill an underrated skill for a change agent okay if you're going to be a change agent in a big complex organization okay you have to know when to conform and when to rebel. So when I think about our team, um, NHS Horizons, you know, um, I'd like to think that a lot of the work that we do is cutting edge and uh, rebellious and supporting um, is supporting big change. And we know that to have the space to be able to uh, operate in that way, we've got to be very good corporate citizens. So we've got to get our business plans in on time. We have to turn up at meetings. We have to follow things up. And one thing that's really important, you'll never hear us talking badly of another colleague um, in, in, our, in our wider organization. Okay? Um, we only speak well of um of, of other people and that's that's you know what we need to do to conform because that gives us the space to do the wider set of things that we want to do you know and um a couple of slides ago i said this is the age of disruption okay but what does it mean to be a disruptor well deborah mayerson says these people these tempered radicals you know they're um uh they're um they're radical, they're very relational on the outside, but they have a core of steel, okay? These temper radicals. What, um, you know, how do they disrupt? Well, the way, what they don't do is, um, is uh, charge around the organization or the system uh, like unguided exocet missiles creating havoc. <laughs> Actually, the people that are the most disruptive or, or the most successful at, at doing big change disruptive things are the people that have really built great relationships, okay? They're people that are capable of working with others to create success, not perceived to be disruptive troublemakers. So paradoxically, the people that are the most disruptive and are the most disruptive in their change practice are the people that have built the strongest relationship, okay? And why is that? Because these people have built their own power base for change, okay? Power. I'm going to talk about it some more this week and we're going to talk about power um, next week so what do we mean by power well this is a quote from bertrand russell the father of modern logic and how he defines power i think is a pretty good definition power is one's ability to achieve goals so if we're change agents and we really want to make a difference in terms of how we provide um you know, care in, um, and support to our communities. You know, if we're change agents that are um, working in a hospital system or in primary care that want to make the care safer, okay, power is our ability to achieve goals. Now, there's different ways that we can think about power and, and lots of us will be saying, well, you know, I'm only a student, I'm only a staff nurse, um, I'm only a middle manager, I haven't got any power to change anything. Yes, we've all got power. We, it, you know, when... Um, uh, change starts with me mindset it's how we think about power that counts so it's very helpful to think about two different kinds of power and this is a framework that comes from jeremy hymans and henry Timms, and they talk about the difference between old power and new power and as change agents we've got to be able to work with both so let's just describe them um quickly so Old power is like currency, it's like money, okay? Some people who have got the formal authority in our organizations and systems have got a lot of power, okay? You know, because they're, they, they sit at the top of the organization and they've got the formal authority to make things happen. So um, uh, it's like currency money, you know, um, uh, some people have got a lot of it, but most of us haven't. So it, formal authority um, held by a few people. OK, and what they do, the authority, the power comes from on high and they download it onto people. And the thing about old power is it's closed. OK, so if I'm the chief exec of a hospital system and I'm working with leaders of the local community, I can't command them to do anything because my authority ends at the door of my organisation. OK. Um, and I can't impose my policies or my quality standards 
or um, my financial goals on, on people outside my organization. Okay. And this kind of power is driven by people with formal leadership roles. Okay. Let's contrast that with new power. L new power is like a current. It's like um, a surge of energy. And the, the more people coming together with a, a common cause, um, you know, something that they're really passionate about, that they want to change in the world, then the more power we have. And the thing about new power is that it's uploaded, okay? It comes from many, many different sources, okay? Many people um, uh, uh, coming together, uploading that power, okay, and, um, and distributing it. And the thing about new power, it's open. So anybody that shares our goal or um, wants to be part of our campaign or movement can be, you know, um, can, can uh, join our, um, our new power calls. And new power is peer driven. It means, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a hierarchy. It's people who come together supporting each other um, to make change happen. One of the big differences between old power and new power is that um, old power is transactional. So it's about structures and systems and processes. It's about governance mechanisms. It's about holding people to account. Okay? New power is relational, which means people will only engage in a new power way um, because they want to. They're, they're, they're volunteering, they're giving their time freely. Okay, it's based on relationships. And it means that if in a new power world, that if, you know, I give my time freely um, and my energy freely to a cause that I feel passionate about, because I think that certain things are going to happen. If my expectations are, are not met, then um, then I won't engage anymore. So so new power okay, is so dependent on trust and as change agents. We have to be able to work with um, with both kinds of power. So thinking about this and going back to Bertrand Russell and his quote, you know, powers our ability um, to achieve goals. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, some of us have got uh, formal roles, so we're able to work in um, in old power ways. Many of us haven't got that authority. So um, so we work in, in new power ways. Okay. And the way that we do that is by expressing our agency. And I want to come on and talk about that um, a little bit now. So when we talk about the school, um, the school for change agents, agents are people who use um, agency. So just going to have a few definitions and then I promise um, we'll, it'll get more interesting. OK, so. What do we mean by agency all the time? We talk about change agency um, in the school. OK. It's the action that people take, both individually and collectively, to express their power. Okay, and expressing their power is actions that we're taking in order to, um, you know, to um, en enable um, change to happen. So change agency is about pushing the boundaries of what's possible, engaging, mobilizing with others in new power ways, and making happen more quickly. And a change agent. Okay, is someone using their agency to make a positive difference. So every one of us okay, has the ability to use our own agency to make a difference. So when we started with that quote at the middle beginning saying corporate transformations, okay, typically our, you know, the, the, the power for change doesn't come from senior leaders. It comes from middle managers. It comes from um, people at the point of care or the point of delivery. Okay. It comes from people using their agency. <clears throat> so in this world, you know, as we hopefully make this transition from a pandemic to a post-pandemic world, okay, we need more than ever, we need change agents to illuminate the way. You know, we need the School for Change Agents 2021 more than we've ever needed it. Because, as David Brace says here, we need... Um, people who are willing to step outside of expectations because of our world's been turned upside down it's changing exponentially okay and if all we do is conformance and um, and consensus and meet expectations in the status quo then we're going to fall behind we're going to fall behind as organizations we're going to fall behind as teams and we are going to fall behind um, as as societies so um you know this is our call to action and and so 
you know, let's think about how we how we um, how we do this. OK, of course, we need to work in old power ways and, um, you know, through the structures of, of the system. But increasingly, and we're seeing it all over the world. OK, the the the, the power that is going to make the biggest difference in a post pandemic world. Um, is um, is new power. The leaders, I'm convinced, that will um, succeed in uh, in a post pandemic world are those that work with new power. Of course, we have to work with with old power as well. But even those leaders with formal authority will need to work in um, in new power ways. Okay. And where does new power come from? It comes from the agency of the crowd. Okay. It comes from many, many people coming together with common, um, with common cause and common purpose um, to, uh, to change the world. And, um, and we have to take a leaf out of their book. So um, uh, I just want to kind of give them, uh, just give a little bit of notice um, to um, uh, uh, Catherine. In, the, in a moment, will you just have a little look at the, um, um, at the chat box and also what we've been um, hit seeing online um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, what's connecting with these ideas? And um, Lee, can I ask you to do the same from, um, from Twitter? So I'll, uh, I'll just say a couple more things and then I'll, um, and I'll stop and, um, and pause and give you a, um, a chance to give us some reflection. OK, so in this world okay, where we need to be using our agency as change agents to illuminate the way, okay, to create you know, a different um, place uh, post pandemic, we have to understand that change starts with me. You know, it's, it's not in our power to change other people, but it is in our power to change ourselves. And um, just a couple of quotes on this. This is um, Otto Sharma about leading from the emerging future. And he says, the success of our actions as change makers does not depend on what we do or how we do it, but on the inner place from which we operate. And, you know, like for me, you know, three decades as a change agent in the NHS, you know, what I was taught was um, I was taught lots of improvement methodology, change methods, you know, how to do process mapping um, how to, um, you know, uh, understand, um, understand priority, how to do statistical process control. And all those things are really important. But, you know, um, really, as a change agent, OK, our success is about where we start from ourselves. This is interesting. This is um, Deborah Rowland and um, and um, still moving. And, you know, um, what her studies showed that where we've got leaders that think about both their inner and outer skills. And what she means by that is their inner skills, like thinking about themselves, like thinking change starts with me, thinking that this world is about um, you know, uh, being a change agent or a change leader is about me and how I interact with others. Okay, where you've got leaders that cultivate those inner change skills as well as the outer ones, okay, around organizing and managing change and making it happen, okay, it increases their chance of success in large complex change, complex change by 52%. I mean, that statistic doesn't surprise me at all, okay, but all of us need to be cultivating our both our inner and our outer skills. And, um, you know, this is a quote um, uh, from um, from uh, one of the pieces which is um, in the um, online course um, that I um, just the collaboration that I've got with Joran Henriks from um, from Sweden. And, you know, just what we're saying there, you know, the nature of change, it's inherently relational. It depends on our ability to work with others to enable to make it happen. And change happens in systems. So, um, Catherine, um, connect that back with what you're seeing in the chat box and also what you've seen in terms of some of the fabulous dialogue on the um, online. Uh, Thanks, platform. Helen. Thanks very much. Well, there's so much happening in the chat box. Um, at the moment, we have more than 4,000 participants going through the School for Change Agents in the FutureLearn platform. Um, and one of the things as I'm listening to you, Helen, that many of them comment on is, you know, during the pandemic, we experienced a little taste of what happens when some of the barriers to making change happen fast were removed in different contexts and we were able to glimpse the possibilities of using more agency. And one of the things that people in FutureLearn have been most appreciative of is the space to think about opposable thinking, which is this theme you're drawing out, paradoxes, 
ideas that we don't resolve, but we hold them in tension. And that's the same in the chat box here. People saying, you know, what you're saying about compliance at the same time as rebelling, what you're saying about old and the new, being ambidextrous in change is really resonating. Zara, I know you've also been looking at the chat on Zoom. Can you share with us one idea that's really grabbed your attention from the chat box on Zoom? Sure, thanks Catherine and thank you for everyone for sharing all your comments and ideas. One thing that stood out for me, highlighted by Kerry and said by Sarah was be kind to yourself and others. Change can be scary and exciting at the same time and a lot of people are agreeing with that idea is that change and the scariness but that excitement and wanting to make that difference and being that change agent so that's the one from me. That's great, Zara. Thank you. And Lee, we're going to come to you in our last pause, I think, uh, later on in the session. So keep the comments coming on Twitter, everybody. Um, and Ian, I know that you've been looking at um, friends who are joining us on YouTube Live. What's the one idea that's jumped out to you from their contributions today? Have we got you there, Ian? We're going to come back to you then at the end alongside yeah, well, Lee. I'll hand back to you, Helen. Yeah, great. Um, so um, Ian and Lee will then um, will hear you at the end. Great. So, um, so just going back to this idea, okay? Like you know, um, change is something relational, okay? Um, it isn't something that um, you know we um, uh, you know we do to um, widgets and um, boxes and cogs and, and wheels. It can be those things. But in um, that, that most of us work in a world which um, is about people, so so it's um, it's relational, okay. And you know, one thing to sort of think about, okay, is in that context, okay. You know, um, you know, thinking about change starting with me, okay. One of the mindsets I think it's really important to think about is um, is rather than than being the picture on the left hand side. OK, you know, I am outside of the change. The reality is that we are on the right hand side. I am the change. Let's just think about the difference. You know, when I went to improvement school in the NHS a very long time ago, you know, what I got taught was all kinds of great change and improvement um, methods. And, you know, I'd go in and I'd be doing a project. So, um, you know, I'd be um, um, doing a project in um, uh, uh you know, in a mental health service um, and around people with acute admissions. And, uh, you know, we'd, um, uh, we'd analyze, you know, um, what was going wrong? Where were the problems in the system? And um, as a change agent, it was almost like standing back and looking at the process and understanding where were the rate limiting steps and where were the um, bottlenecks and um, what got in the way of, um, you know, us being able to, to um, support our service users um, and give them what they needed very, very quickly. Okay, it was all about the um, the structures and the processes and the policies, and almost as a change agent, you know, standing back and observing. But I think our reality is that because change starts with me and it's relational. Okay, every action I'm taking as a, as a change agent. Okay, every word that comes out of my mouth. Okay, is part of the change. So I'm actually in the middle of the change. I'm co-creating it. And I'm doing that within a system of change. When we get on to uh, module three of the live sessions, we're going to be talking a lot about, uh, about systems thinking, about complex systems and being a change agent in a complex system. Okay? And, and, um, and it's so important. We'll come back to this. But it's like, you know, if change starts with me, Okay. Um, and uh, and it's about me um, and my role as a change agent within a system of change. Okay, I need to be a system thinker, and um, and um, you know we love this um, picture, and it comes from the social change agency. And you know, um, as change agents, where change starts with me. Okay, to do my job as a change agent role uh, well, I am a system thinker. You know, I need to be listening actively. I need to be inquiring. OK, I need to be um, asking, where am I in this? As Zara said, I need to be looking after myself and being kind to myself. I need to be able to see the world through the eyes of others, to stand in other people's shoes who may be very different to me. Okay. I need to be experimenting regularly and I need to understand that a lot of things that I try might fail. 
I need to be open to different perspectives and different ways of knowing. I need to be open to what emerges. and Not everything can go to plan, you know, like my um, like the milestones in my project plan. Okay, I need to be ambitious and aspiring, you know, to to yes, to achieve the results and outcomes from my change project, but also for social justice, you know, to create a better, fairer world. I need to be radically humble. Okay, you know, I don't need to be right all the time. I don't need to be the best change agent. I don't need to do better than everybody else. Okay, okay, back to love, you know, um, I need to be acting with an attitude of love. Okay, and um, uh, you know, being loving to other people. And I need to be looking for loads of things, patterns, feedbacks, boundaries, relationships, and connections. I think this is a brilliant list when I'm thinking about being a change agent when change starts with me, because these are all things I um, should be thinking about. Another factor um, I think that we need to think about when change starts with me is to understand the difference and the complementarity of, um, of capability and agency. Okay? They're two different but connected things. So very often, you know, if, um, uh, if I'm going to be a change agent in my service, then I want to learn skills to be a change agent. So I build my capability. And, um, you know, what do I mean by capability? You know, the quality of being capable. It's about um, having the capacity to do it and also the skills. And the thing about capability, they're things that typically I can learn from other people, from experts. OK, and, and we, we absolutely need capability. OK, so the kinds of um, capability that I need as a, um, an, as a change agent, you know, um, improvement skills, project and program management skills, how to use innovation and design methodologies, you know, how to work with analytics and data. I need facilitation skills around facilitating change processes. I need influencing skills. I need coaching skills. Okay. All those are the things that I need to invest in as a change agent um, to build my capability. But capability isn't enough. I also need agency. I need to be in a situation where I can use my power okay, um, to make change happen. And certainly what happens in the health and care system um, and far too often is we, um, we build the capability of change agents, but we don't, we don't build their agency. We don't put them into a context where, um, where they can use their power. So, um, and you know, part of the reason why we have the School for Change Agents is because there's so much focus on building skills for capability, but, but really a big gap when it comes to the agency using your own power um, to make a difference. So, okay, um, you know, um, what are the, the things that we need to be thinking about in terms of building our agency? Well, the, the thing we need to think about before anything else, okay, in terms of our own individual agency is something called self-efficacy, okay? Very, very important idea. Um, so the idea of self-efficacy comes from a psychologist called Albert Bandura, okay? And, and, and he describes it as saying, okay, our ability to act, okay, and don't forget when we talk about agency, you know, it's about, um, it's about our ability um, um, uh, to act, uh, um, to use our power. So, um, yeah, Bandura says so self-efficacy is the ability to act is tied to a belief it's possible to do so, okay? So, um, uh, if I, uh, you know, get put, put in charge of a change project and I don't believe I can deliver it, then I won't, okay? He says, our sense of conviction that we can successfully execute a task to produce the result we want to see. Okay, so self-efficacy is the extent to which we believe we can do it. And Henry Ford, you know, the car guy, um, he put it much more simply. He said, if you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Okay, so our self-efficacy, the extent to which we really believe that we can do something, is critical um, to our agency. And um, there's a kind of summary here, okay, on the bottom right-hand side. There is a positive significant relationship between the self-efficacy beliefs of a change agent and their ability to facilitate change and get good outcomes. So change begins with me, okay? If I don't believe 
okay, that I can actually deliver this. If I don't think I've got the power, then then my self-efficacy means, or my lack of self-efficacy means that I, I won't be able to deliver it. <laughs> so, you know, what are the other aspects of um, agency? Okay, building collective action, because very often it's very, it's difficult on our own in terms of our individual agency, but actually we can work in new power ways and build collective agency with others. Okay, and the third one there, you know, building belonging. And again, if we want to build agency, particularly collective agency, people have to feel they belong, you know, people have to feel that their, their views and their contributions and the unique things that they bring are, um, are really valued. So, you know, as a change agent, focusing on building a sense of belonging with other people is such an important role. It's about embracing diversity. And, and again, you know, um, if we really want to work in new power ways, you know, with the agency of the crowd, then we need all kinds of different people with different views. We don't just want an echo chamber of passionate people like us. We want to really bring lots of different people together. Okay? Agency is about relationships. It's about connections. It's about taking social action together. And as a change agent in health and care and, and other sectors as well, we need both. We need, you know, we talked about some of the tensions. We need capability and we need agency. So, how do we build our um, agency and, um, and self-efficacy within that? that? Well, um, here are five things not to do. Um, and top of the list, okay, do not compare yourself to other people. It's the worst thing that you can do. And, you know, we see it on social media all the time. We look at other people and they're doing change projects and they're getting better results or they're making better um, um you know progress um, in their careers or um they've got better things or or you know um, the only people or the only person that we can compare ourselves to is is ourselves okay and the things that we want secondly don't give attention to detractors and critics because they'll always um they'll always be there and i think you know particularly on social media um and um and other platforms you know keep your attention on, um, on the positive thing, don't, don't give your energy away, okay? Um, if you're working in an, a work environment that's toxic or dysfunctional and, and means that your self-efficacy is at, is at like 0%, okay? It's probably not a good environment to stay in in terms of being able to make um, change happen. And then on a similar theme, you know, we know the studies tell us that as a change agent in a, in a, um, in a formal organisation, the most important factor is having a really good boss, a supportive boss who's, who gives you air cover, who believes in you. So if you haven't got that kind of boss and um, you want to be a successful change agent, then um, it's worth thinking about going somewhere else. And, and, you know, I'd say always, you know, if you're thinking about going for a new role, actually, um, it's about um, it's about, you know, um, interviewing the boss, not interviewing the role. And then finally, OK. Don't assume that other people have got um, a negative motive, because if we're a systems thinker, okay, and if we are working from a place of love, you know, what we should, we should always assume that the that other people have got a positive intention. We might not understand it and um, why they're doing the things that they're doing, but we need to find out. We should always assume that people are coming from a positive place. And here are 10 things to do to build your self-efficacy um, and, um, and your agency and power. Okay? And, um, and you know, think about how you can build these um, into your life, your work, because um, they're all great things to do. Number one, create small changes one step at a time. What I would say is that really small changes can be incredibly powerful and we are constantly underestimating OK, the impact of small changes, because if you just make a small change that has an impact on one or two service users or one or two colleagues, you've taken a big step from having a concept to actually doing something practical. So one of the tools that I use a lot is called Think Two Steps Down. So um, if you're thinking of something that um, that might take a year, okay, go two steps down and think, well, you know, um, what could we actually do in a week? OK, if you're thinking of something um, that you were going to do in a week, think, well, what can we do? And um, what, you know, what can we do in an hour? OK, always think two steps down. Really helpful. Secondly, 
emphasize progress. Here's another one I've got a slide on. Um, this comes from Professor Teresa Amabal from Harvard Business School. And, um, and she got 238 professionals okay, to fill in a diary about their inner work life. Okay. So, and um, yeah, you know, professionals are like many of the people on um, taking part in this live session today. So clinical professionals, legal professionals, other kinds of professionals. Okay. She got 238 of them to fill this diary in. What was really clear from analyzing this diary was their best days at work were when they made progress, when they got a real sense of, you know, I was actually able to move forward in my work, I achieved something, you know, and, and moved towards my goal. Okay. Psychologically, those were the best days for people. What, um, what Teresa um, Amabal also did was that she got 700 managers. So these were the people that were the leaders of the professionals. OK, so more senior people. She gave them five factors to rank um, things that motivated their team members. So, um, so they basically said, you know, you've got all these professionals that work for you. What do you think motivates them? And they were including things like recognition and incentives. And the managers ranked the sense of progress last. Okay. But the professionals said sense of progress was the most important. So, um, you know, think of in your change how for yourself and other people, you can emphasize progress. Okay. A lot of what today's been about this session has been about shifting our mindset, reframing our thinking, you know, you know, build our own self efficacy and, um, you know, understand that change starts with me and that I've got the power to make things different. OK, so so think about shifting your mindset in other ways. So instead of saying, oh, that was awful, it failed. Think what a marvelous learning opportunity. You know, um, uncertainty. Lots of people that are team leaders and middle managers, you know, often what happens is, is that people come to you all the time wanting answers. And you've got to be really confident and know the answer, because if you're not, people might think you're weak. Well, instead of um, pretending that, you know, when you don't. OK. Why don't we flip it and say, wow, that's an interesting question. And um, I don't know the answer to that. Let's find out the answer together. <laughs> Number four, find your crew. Number five, get social support. Those two are linked. OK, a crew is a group unified by a provocative idea. OK, um, so um, what we say, like the first rule of the School for Change Agents is you can't be a great change agent on your own because however um, creative you are, or passionate or clever you know we're in these big organizational systems and like they have like tentacles like normalization you know conform conform so um you know if you don't want to conform okay if you want to challenge a status quo very hard to do it on your own and not fall out of the boat so find your crew find people that think the same as you get some social support OK, number six, make change routine rather than exceptional activity. And that's why I have got so much respect for organizations that um, that have like a quality improvement strategy or an, or, or an improvement approach for the whole organization. And they really build um, uh, improvement in every day. And oh, my goodness, couldn't we see that during um, the pandemic? You know, you can and, and studies are showing it, you know, those organizations that already had, um, uh, you know, uh, a quality improvement capability. Okay, in place across their organization, were able to make change happen and sustain it much more quickly um, in, in response to the pandemic than other places were okay, that didn't have that capability. <clears throat> Number seven, learn from the best. Who are the very best people in your field? Okay, reach out to them and ask them things. Ask them to come and talk to you, ask them to help you with a, a query. The worst thing that can happen is that they could A, ignore you or B, say no, okay? and they probably won't. <clears throat> OK, number eight, OK, is a, is a um, it, this is what we're going to be doing um, uh, next week in module two. Think story. OK, how do we use narrative? You know, narrative is one of the most powerful mechanisms as a, as a change agent to to mobilize people in new power ways. OK, number nine, OK, build a spectrum of allies. We just talked about this with regard to um, um, agency. OK. Because you know, we want a diverse group of people. We don't just want a group of people who all think the same. Okay? We want a really broad um, group of people. And number 10, just because like, we like quotes from Gandhi, 
you know, um, love this one. First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And here I stand um, 30 years after starting my career as an NHS um, change agent, and I'm still here and I'm still persisting. And I still feel it's the biggest privilege in the world um, um, to be doing the job I do. But um, yes, you do have to be persistent. So <laughs> last slide from me, and then I'm going to hand back to, um, uh, to, to Catherine. OK, um, I thought, you know, what would be a lovely place to start in terms of shifting our mindset? You know, change starts with me um, would be to end um, with this um, with this Ethiopian proverb. <laughs> And the proverb goes, when spiders' webs unite, they can tie up a lion. And, you know, for each of us, we might feel, oh, you know, um, we're not very secure. Um, our, the, the threads that we've got for change, you know, um, they're very delicate. But actually, when we pull them together, you know, when we build um, our agency with other people, when we work in new, new um, power ways, we can tie up a lion. And you know what I'd say, when we look at the world before us, um, there's so many opportunities. This is the best time ever to be a change agent. And there's a lot of lions that need tying up. And Catherine, um, at that point, um, over to you. <laughs> That's a great way to end, Helen. Thank you very much. So um, one of the themes coming through in the chat box is positivity. It does not mean being ignorant of the scale of the challenge we sometimes face, but it does mean, as you say, constancy of purpose, persisting over time. Um, loads of comments, including people loving that final proverb that you've ended on there. Now, I'm optimistic that we may have Ian with us. So, if Ian, if you're there, I'm going to ask you to unmute um, because I know you're crossing between our two platforms and we've had hundreds of contributions from across Zoom and YouTube. Um, and just before I bring you in, Ian, I'm going to come to Lee. Lee has been monitoring our Twitter and interacting with people both in the session and who can't join, but are listening in vicariously through social media. So Lee, what have you been learning over the last hour? Hi, thanks, Catherine. There are so many tweets. It's been absolutely on fire. So thank you everybody for your tweets, but to pick out just a few. Um, so Wendy is saying that new power is peer driven. Never say I'm only, you know, push the boundaries of what is possible to make a difference, 100%, I love it. I love that too, Wendy, thank you. And we have Sarah who's saying um, about the effective disruptors, about being um, rocking the boat, but staying in it. It can make you feel a bit seasick sometimes. Yes, it absolutely can. And the wonderful thing is in session two of the Future Learn um, online course, we have lots of resources about resourcefulness that will help you with that seasickness to use that metaphor. So we do look at that if you haven't already. And we have um, all the way from New Zealand, um, Satama, I'm sorry if I've said that wrong, but Kiora, it's brilliant to have you here. And your know, health is such a complex system, requires a lot of patience, being humble and being persistent, absolutely. And last but not least, just one more, Lou Waters saying improvement is 20% technical, 80% human. So thank you ever so much for my lovely humans. Thank you. Thanks very much, Lee, for that. And Ian, do we have a uh, report in from our YouTube community? Yes, thank you, Catherine. Sorry about before. Um, so, yes, thank you to everybody that joined me over in YouTube. I want to say a particular hello to um, Charlotte Minnie Mackham, which I believe is a reference to Sunderland, and also to Jack, who joined me in the chat. I think I'm just going to pick up, though, on Charlotte's uh, reference in particular. Charlotte touched in on agency i think when um she lets us know that she she's felt that the nhs um has had a greater confidence for people to speak up uh, as part of the pandemic and we were wondering a little bit if that was down to the greater sense of community spirit that had emerged within the nhs over the last 12 months so really kind of centered and i think pulled through that belief that individual people can do it so i just want to say thank you to uh, charlotte for, for bringing that point to the fore for us Great contribution, Ian, thank you. So in our last minute, let me show you what happens next. On our next slide, I'll remind you of details of the two live sessions, one next Tuesday, one the following week. The first one, picking up on that theme of community, how we build it through relationships, shared purpose, a sense of us rooted in social justice. And then our final session at the start of June, 1st of June, 3 p.m., 
we're going to be looking at some of those themes of complexity that Helen was pulling out, the spider's web that surrounds us and interacts throughout health and care, through our networks, connections, relationships. How do we make the best of those? So final slide before we say goodbye today, please, just to remind you of the future learn. NH, sorry, horizonsnhs.com forward slash school will take you straight there to all the details you need to access